Okay, uh, we are back live uh, with the virtual trade show uh, series of live webinars that we have going on. And this is the last live webinar of the event. And uh, we are very happy and very excited to be presenting today as the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. Uh, we have uh, several project representatives here ready to present a very special presentation for you all. The Cold Chain Innovation Hub is a project that we have going on in the Philippines that aims to improve the food cold chain through technical resources, training, knowledge sharing, and stakeholder collaboration. And we have a number of representatives from our project partners here uh, ready to present today from the Department of Environment of Natural Resources in the Philippines, from TESTA, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, from UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, as well as from Sheko, the one of the executing partners of this project. Uh, so let me just uh, please allow me to introduce our first speaker for this session, uh, which is Gilda Garibay, the national project leader for the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. Uh, Gilda, are you with us? Hello, Devin. Hello, good afternoon or good morning to our other participants from other parts of the world. <laughs> Hi, Gilda. Yes, perfect. Uh, we can hear you and we can see you very clearly. So I would uh, like to please ask you now, uh, go ahead and take over the slides and uh, we're excited and looking forward to your presentation. Good afternoon. Again, I'm Hilda Garibay and I'm here to present to you the background of our project uh, being implemented currently in the Philippines. So. Uh, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, or UNIDO, is implementing a project in the Philippines called Global Partnership for Improving the Food Cold Chain in the Philippines. It is funded by the Global Environment Facility, or GEF, amounting to $2 million US dollars, plus co-financing by other institutions amounting to around $25 million US dollars. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or the DNR, is the government partner of this project. Well, the executing partners are SHECO, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, or TESDA, and the financial institutions. As mentioned by Devin a while ago, the goal of this project is to identify, develop, and stimulate the development of low-carbon, energy-efficient refrigeration, innovation technologies, and business practices in the Philippines for use throughout the food cold chain whilst increasing food safety and security. Through the project, it is aiming to establish a global partnership between the public sector, the private sector, and the financial institution to, for promotion of investment and support of best available energy efficient design technologies and practices transferred. The project will concentrate on the comprehensive transformation of the commercial, industrial, and transport refrigeration system. Overall, um, the, the, the project was designed to address the following. Number one is that the impact of refrigeration to the global warming through the emission of refrigerants and through the energy consumption resulting to greenhouse gas emission. And then number two, food losses due to inadequate cold chain equipment, which is affecting both the farmers and the consumers. Adequate, fresh, and safe food are critical to our country that is home to 100 million people. The project will achieve such objectives through the implementation of four substantive component and associated outputs. Component one is the policy and regular, regulatory assessment on the use of low carbon and energy efficient technology within the food cold chain. This is under the responsibility of the DNR. And then for the component two, awareness and capacity building on the use of energy efficient, climate friendly, and safe alternatives in the food cold chain. This is under SHECO and TESDA through the food cold, through the cold chain innovation hub. And then component three, technology transfer and established partnership among key stakeholders. Also, this is under the SHECO and TESDA through, again, the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. And lastly, the monitoring and evaluation, of course, will be done by the UNIDO. 
So what is this cold chain innovation have? Um, it is the official platform of the project. It's the official platform of the project. It will serve as the project central ecosystem of technical resources, training, knowledge sharing, and stakeholders collaboration. It expected that through the CCI have new technologies may, will be made available in our country. Partnership between key stakeholders established and finance, financing scheme to develop bank, bankable investment project put into practice. Uh, later on, this will be more elaborated uh, by a presentation. What would be our vision for the CCI Hub? Uh, TESDA has been selected as the national entity to host the CCI Hub at its central office located in Metro Manila. However, because our, of our present situation of the COVID restriction, the CCI Hub is concentrating on its virtual platform, but very soon this year, the physical hub will be established. So let me share to you what we have done so far. So we have this uh, uh, learning materials. We have conducted various uh, webinars and technical trainings. Of course, last year we are also present in the virtual trade show. And this, of course, this year we are much present and we are here to give you more and more about the project to uh, attract collaboration among stakeholders that are present this afternoon. So please, um, Stay tuned and be uh, subscribed to our CCI Hub website for more knowledge, materials, and updates on our events. That's all for me this afternoon, Devin. Gilda, thank you very much uh, for that and giving a, a brief overview of our project, the Global Partnership for Improving the Food Cold Chain in the Philippines. Uh, now I'd like to move on and introduce our next speaker. So we will actually have a recorded video message from Secretary Jonas R. Leonis from the Department of Environment and Natural Resources of the Philippines, one of the main uh, project partners uh, who cannot be with us today, but there is a, a special message that they've recorded for this webinar and I will play the video message now. Good day to you all and thank you for making the Philippine Cold Chain Innovation Hub part of this natural refrigerant virtual trade show. Nowadays, efficient and sufficient cold chain facilities have become extremely vital in our country. Millions of Filipinos need to have secure supply of fresh and safe food. We need to open more business opportunities for farmers, food manufacturers, food suppliers, logistics companies, and food retailers. Agriculture exports can also contribute greatly to the recovery of our economy. Despite the urgent demand for cold chain facilities, there are a number of challenges and barriers for cold chain growth in the Philippines. First of all, a stringent policy framework for creating a stable investment environment in green pooling solutions and technologies is still lacking. Secondly, at present, the natural refrigerant-based equipment is more expensive compared to harmful HFC alternatives. Thirdly, although most enterprises in the Philippines have technical staff responsible for maintenance and equipment operations, their knowledge is often very limited to handling ordinary failures or refrigerant recharging. The level of knowledge and working experience with natural refrigerants and their specific feature is very low. Among the refrigeration and air conditioning te technical staff in the Philippines. Fourthly, some specific components for these new technologies are not available in this country. And lastly, many industrial enterprises do not prioritize energy efficiency due to lack of awareness of potential savings as well as of av available technologies. The good news, however, is that Philippine government is working towards advancing the cold chain industry in the country. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources in, in partnership with the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, is implementing the Global Partnership for Improving the Food Cold Chain in the Philippines project. The project will pave the way for the development and application of low carbon, energy efficient refrigeration innovation technologies and business practices throughout the food cold chain in the Philippines. Capacity development and new technologies will be made available in the country throughout the cold chain innovation hub. Supportive legislative mechanisms needed to implement the most energy efficient and environmentally sustainable food cold, food cold chain technology will be a big part of the project. 
This will address targets to the improvement of the efficiency of food cold chain. We will see comprehensive transformation of the commercial and industrial refrigeration applications throughout the food cold chain in the Philippines. We need to cope up with the challenges of the present situation. We need to be resilient to survive. Thus, I'm inviting the cold chain stakeholders who are present in this virtual trade show to work with us in this initial important initiative. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that message. And uh, yes, as uh, he mentioned, this is a very challenging time, but we are very um, excited and appreciative of the support that we are getting from our project partners, especially uh, the DNR in the Philippines. So thank you for that message. Now I'd like to move on and introduce TESDA, our, our next speaker from TESDA, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, which is a very important uh, project partner who's working with us. And um, we are uh, going to introduce Michael Gayona, who is going to be presenting on behalf of uh, David Ungalian, who is the executive director of TESTA, who could not be with us today due to difficulties uh, with the quarantine and restriction situation right now in the Philippines. But Michael, uh, we're very happy to have you join us. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you. Thank you. Perfect. Um, yes, Michael, you are the senior TESDA specialist at the Green Technology Center. And um, it's, we're very glad that you could join us today to present on behalf of TESDA. So please go ahead and uh, if you could take over the slides, that would be great. Okay, thank you, Devin. Uh, I, I'm Michael Gayona. I'm here uh, in behalf of Director Bungalion. And I'm here to present uh, an overview of what TESDA is. Uh, so for the first slide, Okay, um, so TESDA, or Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, was established in August 25 of 1994 through Republic Act uh, 7796. A TESDA has become the authority mandated to manage the VET, or Technical Vocational educa Educational System, in the country. With this law, TESDA became the primary authority in Tibet and aim to become the leading partner in the development of the Filipino workforce with world class competence and positive work values. In this slide, uh, this is uh, to, uh, to encourage the active, uh, the active participation of various concerned sectors, particularly in private sectors, being direct and immediate beneficiaries of a trained and skilled workers the 22-member TESDA board was composed of 14 members from private sector, representing labor, employer, TVET providers, and investor groups. So they have 14 representatives. And from the government sector, we have eight, which is DOLE, CHED, uh, DOST, DILG, DEPED, D, uh, DTI, uh, DAN, of course, TESDA, TESDA Secretariat, which all in all, we have eight representatives. Okay, for this slide uh, is our uh, vision and mission. The vision of TESTA is to become the leading, sorry, transformational leader in the technical vocational education and skills development of Filipino workforce. A mission is TESTA sets direction promulgates relevant standards, and implements programs geared, to, geared towards a quality assured TVET and an inclusive technical education skills development and certification system. Now, for this slide, this is the Philippine educational system, which have uh, five uh, levels. So in the K, primary and secondary level, that's all basic education. In the blue uh, column, that's technical, vocational, and education and skills training. And for the green, that's a higher education. So the Philippines has a unique trifocalized management of education system consisting of basic education, uh, technical vocation and education training, and higher education. 
Three agencies are involved in policy making, administration, and management of education and training in the country. The Department of Education for Basic Education, uh, TESDA for Technical Education, and CHED or Commission of Higher Education for, for higher level. This is the Philippine Qualification Framework, which the Philippines has referenced with the AQRF. So the, AQ, the PQF, which is a quality assured national system for the development, recognition, and award of qualifications based on uh, standards of knowledge, skills, and values acquired in different ways and methods by learners and workers or educated trained in the Philippines. The, the Philippine Qualifications Framework describes levels of educational qualifications and sets, and sets standards for qualification outcomes. It has eight levels of qualifications differentiated by descriptors of expected learning outcomes along three domains, which is knowledge, skills, skills and values, application, and degree of independence. The PQF was instituted through Republic Act 10968. The Philippines has actively involved in the ASEAN Qualifications Reference Framework, or AQRF, which is a common reference mechanism that enables the comparisons of education qualifications across participating member states, ASEAN participating member states. The Philippines has already referenced the AQRF in 2018. Now, the Philippine TVET system is competency-based. Under competency-based TVET, TESDA draws up competency standards in partnership with industry, which are officially promulgated by the board as training regulations. The training regulations include the minimum training standards which pro by which programs are qualified and registered. The process takes into consideration four essential components of training delivery the curriculum, the qualification of trainers, the tools and equipment available, and also the training facilities. All technical vocational education and training programs offered by public and private technical institutions are required to get prior authority from TESDA through mandatory process of program registration. The same competency standards become the basis for competency assessment which has been declared by test the board as mandatory. The Unified Tibet Program Registration and Accreditation System, or, or as we call this in TESDA as uh, uh, the way the, an institution registers its program, has two stage process of quality assurance. One, Registration of program and monitoring for continuous compliance, and two is institutional accreditation. The registration of all TVET programs with TESDA is mandatory in conformance with prescribed standards contained in the promulgated training regulations. A TVET institution has to comply with the requirement of registration prior to offering a TESDA program. Upon completion of all requirements, a TESDA Certificate of TVET Program Registration, or COPR, is issued to the institution and the program is officially listed in the Compendium of Registered Programs. The program is subject subjected to compliance audit and in some instances surveillance upon receipt of complaint by TESDA. The primary objective of UTPRAS is to promote public interest by ensuring the quality of programs being offered by both public and private institutions. Now, the second stage of WUTPRAS, which is institu institutional accreditation, is, voluntarily, is voluntary, wherein a TVI or an institution with a registered program voluntarily applies to be accredited by TESDA recognized accrediting body. This means that a TVI or a, an institution has instituted a number of all components of quality systems in its programs or institution. 
Tesla recognized the Asia-Pacific Asia Accreditation and Certification Commission or APAC of the Colombo Plan and Staff College as accrediting body for the accreditation of Tibet Institution. Moreover, Tesla implements the star rating system to recognize the accomplishment and improvement that TVI have instituted beyond the minimum requirements of UTPRAS and to determine the level of quality of provision of the TVIs. The training regulations or competency standards development. The, the training regulations are being developed in consultation with industry and promulgated by the TESTA board. The training regulations consist of competency standards, training standards, and assessment and certification arrangements. This serves as a guide for the TVIs and training providers, even the trainers, in the development of curriculum and instructional materials and competency standards packages for competency-based technical education and skills development. It provides the parameters by which programs are qualified and registered. The development of standards, or TR, takes into consideration four essential components of training de delivery. One is curriculum. Then is the next is the qualification of trainers, the, the tools and equipments required. And the last one is the training facilities. Assessment and certification of in TESDA. Assessment and certification aims at assessing and certifying the competencies of learners and middle level skilled workers. The assessment process is done to ascertain the, that the graduate or worker can perform the standards expected in the workplace based on the defined competency standards by the industry. This ensures the productivity quality and global competitiveness of the workers and Tibet graduates. A national certificate is then issued when a candidate has demonstrated the competency in all units of competency that comprise a qualification. A certificate of competency, on the other hand, is issued if the candidate has demonstrated the competence in a selected units of competency. TESDA maintains a registry of certified workers that provides information on the pool of certified workers for specific occupations. It, accredit, it accredits assessment centers as well as competency assessors who administer the competency assessment of persons applying for certification. This is the list of uh, some of the training regulations or, quali or qualifications that TESDA offer under the, which is related to cold chain technology. So these are under the HVAC sector or heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So one is air duct servicing NC2. NC is a national certificate. So the two is uh, the level in the Philippine qualifications framework. So this means that the air duct NC2 is in the level two, ice plant servicing, uh, ice plant refrigeration servicing NC3, land-based transport max servicing NC2, uh, ref and aircon domestic or the servicing NC2, transport servicing NC3, NC2, and ref and aircon servicing NC3. This one is a project uh, of TESDA. In, uh, in partnership with GIZ. So this one is uh, under rock servicing NC2, in which we have trained trainers for the safe installation, service, and repair of split type aircon systems using R290 hydrocarbon as refrigerant. So this one, we train trainers how to, how to handle R290 hydrocarbon. Uh, then they, they develop uh, learning materials which can they, which they later uh, teach in the uh, taught in their respective institution. So that's all for for Tesla David. Michael, thank you very much. Um, it's great to understand the robust framework for training 
certification uh, standards and your curriculum at TESTA. So it's really great to get this overview because we know that TESTA is playing a key role in helping um, disseminate the training and the knowledge uh, for the new cold chain technologies that we are uh, aiming to introduce with this project. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I have one quick question, Michael, if uh, you can hear me. Uh, this is about the, the R290 training. Um, were, were you a part of this training? Uh, did, did you experience or have any good feedback from the people who attended this uh, training for rack servicing? Um, actually, Devin, I, I'm not part of the training. Uh, I was not yet assigned here during that time, but uh, I have one colleague here who attended the training. Actually, we already uh, donated eight units to uh, our institution. They are already uh, uh, applying training in their respective institution using R290 units. Yes, yeah, so so TESTA and training with, with natural refrigerant uh, technologies is, uh, is not anything new uh, now we know. And uh, natural refrigerants play a key role in the uh, introducing new cold chain technologies uh, to the country. So thank you again for your presentation and um, we hope to uh, contact you again in the future. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, so uh, we are going to be moving on now. And um, just a quick note, TESTA is also playing a key role in the physical uh, space for the Cold Chain Innovation Hub, which we will be presenting uh, very soon at the end of this webinar. However, I would like to first introduce our next speaker, Ms. Francisca Menton from UNIDO, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, who will be telling us a little bit about the importance of training and why training is such an important uh, factor for this project. Uh, Francisca, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Devin. Good to see you. See you too. And good morning from, uh, I know you're based in uh, Europe, so thank you for joining us. Uh, you can go ahead and take over the slides and uh, you're good to go. Thank you very much, Devin. And exactly, training and TESTA is my keyword. And yes, first of all, my name is Francisca. Very good to see you all. Good morning from Europe and to Europe. Good afternoon to Asia Pacific. Uh, well, good night to the Americas. <laughs> Thank you for uh, staying with us. And uh, I hope you stay a few, like half an hour longer. And um, yes, and I'm happy to be here at the virtual trade show. I mean, it's a it's a great occasion to, to still meet and to be still connected to people. And that's also what we're doing with our, with our cold chain project, the, uh, creating a global partnership um, virtually, physically, um, around the globe and of course uh, based physically in the Philippines. So as we saw now also with the creation of the Cold Chain Innovation Hub and the partnership with TESTA, um, a big part of the project activities through the CCI Hub online and in real life will be training. I guess most people and, uh, and you agree that training is important. But uh, the feedback we receive in our projects at UNIDO is that it's rather seen as a burden, as a challenge, something that costs a lot and is not really available. I would like to give you in brief an idea of the real value and impact of training and how training can actually create a win-win situation for both the environment and the economy. And yes, I know that's not rocket science and something completely new to you, I'm sure. Uh, or that we, you, you were not aware of. But yes, well, sometimes the most obvious things can be easily forgotten. So the purpose of this presentation is also to share our experience and approach here at the UNIDO Montreal Protocol Division, working with hundreds of capacity building projects in the area of refrigeration and air conditioning over the past 30 years, and what then also influenced the design of our cold chain um, project. Maybe let's step, um, take one step back. What guides us and what we believe is important when defining a long-term strategy for training is that we have the goal to develop the culture and the tools for a dynamic lifelong learning framework. Sorry, I'm just starting actually the timer to not go too, too much overboard. Only then we can um, ensure to create uh, the trained workforce to support the optimal use of resources to deliver access to cooling for all thus reducing food waste and avoiding the overheating of the planet. So that's the underlying principle of all our work related to training capacity building at UNIDO. 
Therefore, we're also applying this in our food culture and project, and it will be a crucial part in our trainings, as mentioned, in virtual and physical at the Culture and Innovation Hub. But why is training now important? So for the food cold chain and what impact does it have on the environment? Well, when you look at the different refrigeration installations and systems along the food cold chain, you can basically break it down. I mean, you can break it down to lots of things, but I categorize it in six um, key factors for an efficient cold chain. So it's a choice of refrigerant. It is a very important, um, a very important factor depending on the system the conditions and the surroundings it can have a significant influence but also equipment design and selection of components the proper installation meaning using the right components and setup taking into consideration practices of the climate location etc of course also proper and regular maintenance operations so refrigerants are charge cleaning of coil and filters and so on also important and often not looked at and something easy to influence is also just reducing the cooling load and have like a the bigger picture and and, and take also sometimes a step back and uh, look at your refrigeration system and what you're cooling and then efficient building and construction models of course so if we zoom in now to proper installation and maintenance factors that i just mentioned who is responsible for that part? Well, exactly. It's the engineers, the service technicians who need to be trained in the right way. Because see the impact of servicing on energy efficiency. Also under the Montreal Protocol framework, it was recognized by their technology economic um, assessment panel, TIAP, that the impact of proper installation, maintenance and servicing on the efficiency of equipment and system systems is considerable over the lifetime of these systems while the additional cost is minimum appropriate maintenance and servicing practice can curtail up to 50 percent reduction in performance and maintain the related performance over lifetime improving servicing which includes also um, in this definition the installation and maintenance can be used to achieve energy efficiency as a result of better practices at the same time skills and capacity building can be a value add for countries both in terms of creating jobs and new smes and meeting the climate targets now a question to you <laughs> i'm sure you all have uh, uh, multiple and good answers for that what do you think is actually the economic and climate impact of poor installation and commissioning and lack of maintenance of the cooling equipment along the food cold chain so you can, if you want, you can uh, type in your answer in the, in the Q&A section. And I'll have a look in a second because I think there is a little delay. I'm sure there is um, mentioning of, for example, give you one more second. Yes, of the increased operating cost, the increased CO2 emissions, direct and indirect, the impact of downtime, lack of performance, reduced component and system life, safety and health impacts for the workers and the people around, also not to forget, and also losing confidence in the products and brands. So this is just to mention a few that are mostly obvious, but maybe sometimes some of them are, are forgotten here and there. Um, just to show you also in, in, in numbers and figures and in examples that we have also seen in our project and that we have feedback that we have received from the Montreal Protocol te Technical Assessment um, panel that they have also me measured and researched is um, effects of proper maintenance on rated energy efficiency. So there is easy ways, relatively easy ways and relatively cheap ways to um, save energy in an, in, an, in an easy way. So for example, check charge periodically and refill up to the recommended level when it comes to the refrigerant and the oil charge. It can, uh, it can save up to 50% and the cost of that are very low. Also, for example, the air circulation into the condenser, reduce the recirculation by cleaning filters and improving obstacles. Um, on an average, of course, these are like average numbers across the different industries, across the different systems, this can save up to 25% and 
and also here the maintenance costs are very low but the the, the technicians they have to know they have to also the end users have to be informed that this is a thing so that they also get the maintenance support on a regular basis and that they see that this is an investment that pays back very fast um maybe also looking at the time and i guess you all know these kind of impacts that actually have um, uh, leaks in a system so um, it's not just that it reduces efficiency but actually it can break down at the end can break down the system and the repair and consequential costs um, can escalate basically so let's look at the bright side <laughs> To sum up, the positive impact of training on environment and the economy, and actually also the health. Um, and we mean ideally training for all involved stakeholders, so service technicians, but also the engineers involved in consulting and installing the end users, even the financial institutions and the policy experts should be informed, should be trained, um, should be aware of these impacts because the positive impacts of the training are reduced energy, reduced leaks, first level definition of direct and indirect CO2 emissions, um, the better system performance, reliable and constant cooling, which is crucial, obviously, for certain products in, in the food cold chain and thus reduces the food loss and improves also the quality of the, um, of the product and extends the shelf life. So all of this is like clear, directly benef um, beneficial for, um, yeah, not just for the environment, but actually for the, for the economics of the supermarket, for example. Improved safety by eliminating risks, better temperature control and thermal comfort. Also, don't forget, lower and deferred capital expenditure for replacement and repair costs by extending the useful life of the equipment, not just of the food. Compliance with regulations, of course, that's an important topic for, for us as UNIDO and for the governments. The minimum efficiency requirements, safety measures and regulations, the Montreal Protocol, of course, the UNFCCC obligations that all the countries have in the world. That's why we, we, we can maybe based on that and based on our experience, we can put together kind of like an overview of recommendations um, that we have for the governments, but also for the companies. In the Philippines, like in basically uh, all the countries around the globe to different degrees, there is still a lack of awareness about the potential energy savings from better training, for maintenance and servicing, but also for the end users and policy experts. And thus the impact on the climate and the economy this has. The different sectors involved in food cold chain usually lack mechanisms to access and disseminate up-to-date information on alternatives to HCFCs and HFCs as they develop. In general, there is relatively low awareness concerning the use of energy efficient products and refrigerants such as CO2, hydrocarbons, ammonia. Um, you in our crowd here, we are very well aware of that and that's why we need also you and your support um, for the project, for other projects, for bringing this knowledge all around the globe, basically. Um, but we sometimes forget that we, we feel that um, what we know, everybody knows, but we are basically on a, on a global level, on a global scale, also what we see in our developing country projects. This is kind of a, a, a knowledge that is not out there yet and that has not reached uh, the, the service technicians, the engineers, not even all the politicians that are involved because also everybody is changing. There is a, there is a circle <laughs> of, of life and of work in, in all the um, positions. So natural refrigerants, big thing, very important and including technical performance and safety issues. Um, more training, awareness raising, technical education for service technicians, system engineers, end users, policy experts, and other stakeholders involved in the food call chain is needed. That's what I just mentioned. But please always with a more holistic view, more of a system approach and questions that governments and also companies should ask themselves. Are we measuring the system performance and capturing all the efficiency gains or simply the primary um, component? Create a clear economic win-win-win relationship between the country, the manufacturers, the service providers, the service users and cooling finance community. What are the environmental and economic impacts 
but also, as we saw, health effects. And um, what are the wins? Training can have a business model. What is the career opportunity for the trainees and SMEs? How can we link it to cooling finance? So create also clear values such as licensed sustainable cooling technicians. In Gambia, we had training programs where they were afterwards called the super technicians. They were very proud wearing their shirts with the super technicians also included was a certificate and, and they, they were then perceived and received in the country as the high level and um, especially trained technicians getting better jobs. And also being proud of it um, themselves, being aware about the environment and the technical details that they have learned. Can we support the development of new SMEs, not just standalone technicians, for example? So there's many different areas um, that we can look at. And maybe just as a, that's my last slide, um, quickly also to summarize what skills and trainings are required to important to look at. So design and install the system with a maximum performance, looking at the refrigerant, but also at the thermal um, uh, conditions and looking at the entire system and what waste, heat and so on um, you can use in the system, energy efficiency, maintain our current rack stock and meet projected deployments, support the implementation of MAPS, a minimum efficiency performance standards and ultra low, ideally natural refrigerants and cooling action plans support the deployment of step change technology innovations including integrated systems hybrid systems using solar industry 4.0 um, energy efficiency sensors and so on and deliver passive and non-mechanical solutions as well also important point to look at so all in all this means use technologies with minimum impact on the environment in a safe and efficient way and it will save money basically automatically that's our message Thank you very much. And over to you, Devin. Francisco, thank you for the presentation. And it's very important that we have uh, this sort of breadth and this wide depth of experience that UNIDO has uh, implementing these types of these projects around the world. Um, I was just curious, I wanted to ask you uh, just a bit of a follow-up question. Um, you mentioned that uh, that program in Gambia where uh, where technicians were very proud to uh you know had gone through that training and the, the whole level of the industry was uh, rising up organically as a result i was just curious what what industry sector was that in um that was service technicians that we trained for the installation of r290 uh, room air conditioning so energy efficient 200 units that were, um, were brought to the gambia and that are now running in the country so we don't have these units running in Europe, but uh, actually there are already 200 units in, in Europe running, uh, running and very happy technicians, super technicians that are proud to maintain, install and, and teach others, it's also train the, uh, train the trainers program, teach others about this technology. Yeah, perfect. I mean, so there's just a really uh, big um, opportunity here for Testa with its already existing uh, strong curriculum and its training programs that are already in place combined with uh, new technologies that we're bringing in um, and the perspective and that uh, UNIDO has in implementing these types of projects around the country. So I think uh, this is going to be a, a very uh, important collaboration that we're going to have uh, throughout the rest of uh, this year, uh, which we have some very exciting developments to talk about very shortly. So Francisca, thank you again uh, for your presentation. Um, yes, so now we are going to uh, introduce, well, I'm going to introduce Jan Dushek, who is the head of global partnership for the Cold Chain Innovation Hub project. And we are just going to be talking about and addressing some of the progress, uh, important milestones that we've reached um, over the first, uh, first year of the project and some of the most important next steps that we're going to be taking. So Jan, go ahead and take it away. Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and good morning to our colleagues uh, in Europe. Uh, this is Jan, uh, head of the global partnership of the Coach and Innovation uh, Project in Philippines. I'm very pleased uh, to be here today, and I'm following on uh, what my colleagues uh, Gilda, uh, Francisca, and Michael uh, shared with us already uh, when it comes to the importance of cold chain, uh, our work on the ground, as well as uh, importance of training, and uh, with the specific examples around the world. So I'm very happy to be here today with you all, uh, and uh, I would like to present today uh, some of the progress that has been made under the project last year, 
as well as uh, for the first time to share with you uh, what is a vision for the physical space of the Coaching and Innovation Hub with a specific reach out to you, to the industry, to work with us. So thank you for the opportunity to present uh, this uh, here today with you. First of all, a few updates on the activities that took place and uh, the results that are uh, accessible on our websites for everyone uh, free of charge to, to tap into. So uh, we have uh, conducted a very detailed research of the cold chain uh, in Philippines. Uh, we have published a report uh, last uh, June 2020 that is available on our web page. Uh, we have also uh, dedicated a webinar to presenting the market research results. So four of you uh, interested and looking for more information about the, the cold chain and what are the, the challenges and opportunities, uh, you can uh, see uh, the report and access it from the uh, Cold Chain Innovation Hub booth as well. Uh, I'm also glad to share with you that uh, with more than 30 videos that were already uh, published and generated uh, for the project, we have cumulatively uh, have more than 3,200 views already. And this number is, is uh, growing on a daily basis. So we, we are very happy to be able to share increasing the amount, increasing amount of knowledge information, technical training, and other assets uh, with the local industry from some of the uh, top experts uh, from the cold chain globally. We have, uh, over the last uh, year, we have organized and uh, worked with uh, top experts. We have organized several uh, live events. Uh, the events are of a two kind. Uh, we organize a webinar, which is a shorter format of the event. In this case, uh, we uh, have organized a webinar dedicated to solar cooling for food cold chain, as well as the one for the, the market research, evaluating the food cold chain in Philippines. We have also organized first two live technical training workshops, one of them focusing on commercial refrigeration, and one of them just uh, actually taking place uh, last week, focusing on advanced technologies for industrial refrigeration. So both of them were well attended. And again, all this accumulated knowledge is then available and shared with the industry, not only in Philippines as our main aim, uh, it's open to, of course, uh, other uh, industries in Southeast Asia and globally. So we hope that this accumulation of knowledge and uh, open platform will help increase the, the access to this information in uh, this part of the world. We have also been involved in a number of uh, different events uh, for the outreach to the international industry. And actually last September, uh, the virtual trade show, the very first edition uh, organized by Sheko was uh, also uh, where the uh, Coach Innovation Hub was present in dialogue with the international community. So this is our second time we are participating uh, now, uh, finally now with the live webinar sharing more, more detailed content. Uh, there was also uh, an Atmosphere Asia dedicated to a uh, cold chain uh, sector in the uh, Philippines with a lot of experts from government, from industry associations and users presenting, uh, as well as basically bringing the international community again to the table to discuss uh, the challenges in the Philippines. To date, uh, we had more than 1,000 participants in our events. Uh, you can see the breakdown, male, female. Uh, we hope to get a little bit more balanced picture, but I, I would say you would agree with me that for our refrigeration industry, this, this result is, uh, is, is quite good. The number of organizations, uh, more than 1,500 organizations have been involved in our live event so far. So we're very thankful and we continue building the momentum. Uh, finally, cumulatively, we were able to provide more than 3,000 uh, hours of training, man hours uh, training to the industry which is again something that uh, we have only started about six months ago our dedicated uh, training live events and we intend to continue not only with online events uh, but we hope to be able to soon uh, phase in also a physical uh, more specialized uh, technical trainings on the ground at a test at the coaching innovation hub Another information I would like to share with you is the growing uh, number of uh, contacts that are subscribed uh, to the uh, updates of the project. We have grown from uh, under 200 to actually very close to 900 uh, within the period of 
around one one year and then a few months. So this also symbolizes the interest in, in uh, the activity uh, and both from domestic and international industry. So this is uh, this is again the indication of of the momentum uh, that there is behind the project, especially of last six uh, six to eight months. With that, I would like to uh, show uh, you some of our next steps and the plans for the uh, next uh, few quarters. The first update is regarding our uh, live events. So uh, after organizing four uh, technical training workshops and webinars, we have uh, uh, several of them planned for near future. The next edition of the technical training workshop will be dedicated to transport refrigeration. So if you are in, uh, involved in transport with natural refrigerants and other sustainable technologies, please get in touch and we can uh, have you also involved. Uh, be very much uh, interested in the concept of uh, solar powered uh, cooling transport, uh, as well as use of uh, natural refrigerants, both CO2 and hydrocarbons uh, when it comes to cooling of refrigerated trucks, reefers and uh, etc. So. Uh, this is a workshop, uh, this is a training, a workshop uh, that we'll be working on, uh, uh, we are working on already, and we will be announcing the date of the event uh, within the next uh, two weeks. Another upcoming uh, series of webinars will be dedicated to topics such as cooling as a service. So the innovation and the information that we would like to bring to the market is not only about technology, it's also about innovation in the business model, in financing, in maintenance, in other aspects involving many, involving many stakeholders. So uh, cooling as a service is a big topic that we would like to follow going forward. And now, uh, after you have heard already from uh, Michael from TESDA, we would like to share with you uh, for the first time uh, with the industry uh, information about the physical space uh, for the, of the Cold Chain Innovation Hub. So the Cold Chain Innovation Hub is, is really the ultimate goal of the project, to establish a physical facility when the industry, uh, all stakeholders in the industry can come to visit, can come learn about new technologies, can uh, absorb a training on different aspects, can see and touch and work with latest technologies on uh, both permanent uh, basis as well as, as a temporary exhibition and so on. So I'm very pleased uh, to share with you that uh, the location of the hub has been uh, confirmed and selected. Uh, you can see the, the TESDA campus in Metro Manila. This is very convenient location, uh, very close to the uh, international airport. So it's quite accessible for both the domestic and international stakeholders. So you can see the campus of TESDA. Here you can see the actual complex, uh, the, the uh, regional training center. And uh, the building is uh, the building entrance is on the very right side of this building. I will move on to share with you also the the layout and uh, the footprint of the building. So on the right side, you can see the profile of the building. It's uh, very high ceilings. Uh, the footprint of the the whole building is around 500 meters square. So it gives us a very sufficient space for both the permanent showroom, the exhibition space. Uh, there will be a facility, uh, uh, actually a refrigerated cold room. So that will be an actual running system providing uh, refrigeration cooling for the training. And there will be also enough spaces for uh, other administration uh, training and so on. So you can see that the, the space is quite large, uh, including high ceilings, which gives us possibility, opportunity to, to work with uh, fairly large systems. Uh, could be the containers with training equipment or other larger refrigeration systems. We have uh, put together some, uh, for you to really have a little bit more specific idea about what the vision behind the coaching innovation hub is. Uh, we have put together this, uh, this sketch where you can actually see this is the, this is the physical space. Uh, the picture is of course uh, adjusted or designed but it's based on the, the real pictures from the facility. So this is how we, how we imagine the coach innovation hub to be like, uh, having a different pieces of equipment for people to, uh, to come and see, uh, including some of the technology being, uh, being of course, uh, up and running. Uh, then uh, 
physical space exhibition uh, with the latest technologies. And this ranges from small plug-in equipment to larger uh, heat exchangers, uh, rack systems, condensing units, uh, component level compressors. So we are quite open. And this is where the opportunity for the international industry is to uh, get in touch with us and to work uh, with us on, on securing this, this location for permanent exhibit of your technology that is, of course, uh, focused on the sustainable food cold chain in Philippines. So we are very excited about this, uh, about this showroom of the Cold Chain Innovation Hub, but that's not the only part. What we, uh, what we intend to establish in this facility is also, of course, a meeting room, is uh, a classroom or training room when uh, the technicians and the industry can uh, up, you know, uh, actually get involved for the training. Then uh, we would like to have a dedicated uh, space for uh, VR, for virtual reality uh, training modules that you can and that the industry can take advantage of to have an access of the latest technology and connect with the experts uh, globally. So there is different ideas uh, that, uh, that would be applied to this whole space. Uh, it's not just the exhibition. There will be several modules that we'll be working on and ideally we will be able to create an overlap between the physical and the virtual by uh, having a 3D showroom that would be based on a physical space as well as argumented reality that would help uh, this uh, interactive uh, interactions uh, between uh, the technology, the community and, uh, and the physical, the delegates that will be able to attend on the ground. So we are very excited about this project. Uh, the pandemic has delayed a uh, number of our activities, sadly. Uh, however, uh, we are uh, ready to be uh, working on the physical space actually uh, in the quarter two, uh, April, uh, starting April. So both TESDA and other project partners are, are uh, fully on board and we hope to be able to bring more information and specific opportunities for the industry. Uh, this is the first time when we are presenting this, this idea uh, with, with a little bit more uh, concrete vision, uh, concrete, concrete idea behind this vision. And uh, within the next uh, few weeks, we will be having a dedicated webinar to, uh, to showcase uh, actually uh, more detailed about behind the vision. So uh, it would be great if you get in touch and, and uh, the opportunity is, is, now, is now clear and near for, for all, the, all the suppliers in the industry. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Please get in touch. Uh, some of you have already, and uh, we'll be very much uh, ready to, to work with the, the suppliers on creating this showroom and other, other parts of the physical hub. So thank you very much uh, for, your, for your time today. And I believe we have a few minutes for the questions. So off to you, Devin. Thank you very much, Jan. Um, we are going to be uh, wrapping up our presentation now. We have... Uh, just a bit of time left. So I'd like to just give some, some closing thoughts and, uh, and say we're very excited to be presenting this uh, to you today. This is the first time that we have been presenting uh, these details. And, and we're also very excited to have uh, TESTA, representatives from TESTA, from UNIDO, uh, speaking about the project and from, from DNR. So uh, we know that we have a lot to look forward to and um, there has been uh, a lot of progress made. So. This has um, been great to get in touch with the industry through the virtual trade show. Uh, we have about an hour left for the virtual trade show. So I'd like to remind everybody also that um, you can visit us at our booth, uh, CCI Hub, the booth uh, on the showroom floor. You can also visit a lot of uh, number of manufacturers uh, that are exhibiting uh, natural refrigerant systems and some of the latest technologies that are available today. Um, so please go ahead and spend this last hour to check, check it all out. Uh, I'd like to say again, thank you to all our speakers and to everyone who's participated in the uh, exhibition. Uh, it's been very exciting and uh, we're looking forward to uh, keeping in touch with everybody and really bringing the community together to, to, together to push uh, a lot of these uh, initiatives that are based on uh, natural refrigerant technology forward. So thanks again and uh, we'll see you all again soon.